like to open with a quick question. How many of you feel that your parents don't understand you? Quick hands up. Yeah, really? Now that's a few hands here and there. Now trust me, it is the same with everybody, okay? At some point we've all felt that. Now, if you go to your mom and say, mom, I want to become an artist. Or if you go to your dad and say, dad, I want to get that guitar and start learning to play music. The first response you'd probably hear from them will be no. Now I've had this instance in my life where uh, I got to understand why parents say no and how we could go about it. And I would like to walk you through that story today. So this started uh, when I was 16 years old. When I was in my 11th grade, I fell in love. I fell in deep, serious, passionate love with Jagrati Yatra. Now Jagrati Yatra is an exciting train journey that takes 450 brilliant youngsters to 12 destinations across India for 15 days. Now during the journey, the participants get to meet a number of role models and influencers. They get exposed to the socio-economic problems in India and they try and devise solutions for that. So the moment I saw this, I knew it was calling me, you know, I knew I wanted to go on this. But the only thing that was stopping me from going was the age limit of 20 to 27. So I was literally waiting every year to turn 20 to be eligible and worthy of going to the Yatra. And finally, this year, I applied. And guess what? I got selected. Now I was super happy. I was so, so happy. I ran to my mom and I told her, oh my, I've got selected to it in Jagrati Yatra. You know, Jagrati Yatra is this, Jagrati Yatra is that. I'm so excited to go. And she said, no, you're not going. I said, Amma, I get to travel India. I get to see these people. I'm going with 450 other people. And she was like, what? You're going with 450 people you don't know for 15 days all over India. Why the hell would you do that? You're not going, no. And Arya, a no is a no. This is what she said. Now, at that moment, I was certain that I had to go on this. I was sure that I'm definitely going on this no matter what. But I did not know how to tell her that, you know, along with your permission, I need 62,000 rupees to, to sponsor my travel. I really didn't know how to tell her that. So I chose not to talk to her. A furious mom is, you know. So I pinged a friend of mine, Yadu, who's also a previous Jagrati Yatri. And I asked him, you know, is there any way I can get some money, uh, any sponsorship, anything I can do? And uh, he actually told me about crowdfunding. He told me that most Jagrati Yatris use crowdfunding to support themselves and you know be independent and go on the Yatra. So I was like, wow, that's amazing, that's great, but what is crowdfunding again? Because I had no clue, right? So you know, when you don't know something, you go ask that one person who knows it all, Google. So I went and asked Google and I figured out a bit, of, a bit about crowdfunding. So for those few who don't, who don't know, Crowdfunding is where a group of people come together to put in small amounts of money to support a cause or an idea. So basically I wanted, say you want 1000 rupees, you can either get 1000 rupees from one person or 100 rupees from 10 people. So that's the whole idea. So I had no clue about this. So I figured out a crowdfunding website called Keto. I put up a campaign page. I wrote why I want to go on this yatra, I love this yatra, you know, the reasons that motivate me because I'm, a, I'm an aspiring social entrepreneur, uh, this, that, and all I knew was sharing on Facebook. So I shared it on Facebook and within the next one minute, I got 1,000 rupees for my campaign. And in the next two minutes, it grew, it grew to 3,000 rupees. And by the end of the day, I had raised 8,000 rupees, which is actually 13% of my target amount, 62,000. Now that gave me this belief that, you know, I can do this, you know, I can finally go on the Yatra. So I was again excited. I went to my mom and I said, Am I running this crowdfunding campaign? And, you know, people are actually supporting me. I've got 8,000 rupees right now. And she said, What you're doing right now is nothing but another form of begging. You are liable to all these people. You understand that. This is not how we, you know, expected you to be. I'm thoroughly disappointed at you. 
Now, I did not, uh, I did not know what to tell her. Um, I was depressed, I was sad. And I did what most people do when they're sad. I went to sleep. So, uh, so I could not sleep, you know, because when you have your true love calling and you want to go, uh, I had the money problem, I had my parents, I, I didn't know what to do. So I woke up in the morning all half asleep and half tired and half, I don't know, feeling what. So the moment I opened my mailbox, I saw that I had an email from Keto, that's the website I was doing my campaign on, and it said, your campaign has received rupees 19,500 from Brett Mason, who is the vice president of Bitcoin India. <laughs> now, I, I did not know what to feel, you know, that moment, it suddenly gave me belief that, you know, if people are actually believing in me and my cause, why shouldn't I believe in myself? So I decided I'm not going to tell my mom again. No. So I wanted to stay away from the negativity. I decided to take this up. I decided to make most out of the campaign. I moved to Cochin to my friend's place to work on this. And for the next two days, I put in blood, sweat, tears, whatnot. Okay. So at that point, I was certain that my campaign is definitely going to hit 100%. But then, you know, my, I thought about my mom. Why did she say that? She said that because she probably doesn't know about crowdfunding. She doesn't know that all this exists. So it is upon me, and there will be a number of people who don't know. So it is upon me to take this opportunity and create awareness about opportunities such as these. And you know that possibilities such as these, that this can be done. It is real. So I chose to write personally to all the people I knew, my friends, family, startups, women I'm working with, anybody and everybody I knew. And I sent out close to 120 personalized emails. I wrote personally to each person I knew. And I, was, I started getting in money. Now my campaign started growing. My friends started putting in hundreds and two hundreds from their pocket money. I had a lot of start, early startups and organizations supporting me, a lot of influencers supporting me. And soon my campaign crossed 50%. It was at 60%. It grew to 70%. I was at 80%. Now at this point I was certain, you know, I'm definitely going, going to make this. So all happy, all satisfied, I came back home. Uh, I, I, I again did not tell my parents about this. So I was sitting there, I was working on my campaign, and my mom came, sat next to me, and she said, so the moment she sat next to me, I was like, oh no, something's going to happen now. And she said, how can I contribute money for your campaign and support you? Now, that moment, when your parents finally support you, I cannot put it to words. You know, when they finally understand you, she actually went on to contributing 2,000 rupees through my campaign website. And the first thing I did at that moment was click this picture. Because this is a rare side, it never happens in everyday life. So she actually went on to put in 2,000 rupees. And she's not a tech savvy person, but even then she shared on Facebook and you have to read what she's written. My daughter Aru is doing a crowdfunding campaign to raise funds to attend Jagrati Yatra. She's already crossed 70%. This is the first time even I'm hearing about crowdfunding. Initially, I did not believe in this, but I was surprised to see so many people supporting my daughter. If you find her cause genuine, please support her. Now she... Now, one thing I realized then, oh, by the way, uh, the campaign succeeded. In five days, I raised 68,650 rupees with 52 supporters. And yay, I'm going to Jagrati Yatra. But now what I realized is that your parents love you a lot. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, they will be there with you in, your, in all your highs and your lows. But then why do they say no? Why are they scared? Now to understand this better, I want to give you an example. Say I'm asking you to jump into ice cold water that is 10,000 feet deep. What comes to your mind initially? Oh no, I'm not doing that. I don't know swimming. What if there are sharks in it? What if I die? Because I haven't told you anything. I've just told you that you, know, you have to jump into water, which is 10,000 feet deep and ice cold. So it is basically this you know, lack of information because you don't know what's going to happen. That makes you worried. This is exactly what happens to them. Because my mother or my father, they've not heard about Jagrati Yatra. They've not heard of crowdfunding. They know nothing about this. So obviously the first reaction that comes to them is fear. 
Now, if I tell you, no, no, don't worry, you will be taught how to swim, you will have a life jacket, you will have a lifeguard, I know there are no sharks, and we will not let you die. Feels better? This is exactly what you have to do to your parents. Give them reasons to believe in you and what you stand for. Tell them why it's okay. Tell them why it should be done. Tell them why it means so much to you. Now, in between my campaign, when I was absolutely disturbed, and I did, you know, my parents were not supporting me, and I felt drained emotionally. So I rang uh, my mentor and friend, Sejo Kurvila. Joy, I'm pretty sure he's talking today here as well. So he gave me this piece of advice that really, really touched me. He said, when you were a little girl, say four or five years old, and you were scared to go on stage and recite that beautiful poem, your parents stood by you, helped you, and made you understand. They made you feel comfortable about it, and you went ahead and did it. And now, look at your parents like that scared, afraid four-year-old kid, and it is upon you to make them understand and feel them, com feel them comfortable about it. This actually influenced me a lot. And every single time my parents argue with me and they start uh, questioning me, they start getting angry, I think of this image. And that helps me make them understand better. Now, all this is testimony that acceptance waits at the end of it. It waits at the end of execution. Most often our parents say no and we just go on, go ahead and quit it, right? Some of us don't even find the, you know, guts or the, uh, you know, the excitement or the energy to go ahead and do it. But some of us actually go ahead and lie and do it anyway and come back and lie to them again, only to get caught and make them sad some other time, right? So why not do this? Why not give them reasons to believe in you? Why not help them understand? Why not communicate with them? Because we keep complaining that our parents don't understand us. But take a moment and question whether you understand your parents. It's time we step into their shoes, think from their perspectives, and give them reasons to believe in us and what we stand for. Because some relationships are worth fighting for. Now I'd like to close this on this note with a very quick disclaimer. While I'm saying that all this is doable, I am not telling you that it's going to be easy. Because yesterday, I was super excited and I told my dad, Acha, I got selected to do this TED talk. I'm so excited. I'm going here to MEC. I'm going to do this. And he said, no, you are going to study. You're going to prepare for your semester exams. Now, probably the next, uh, you know, I look forward to turning this around and probably the next picture I'll click and share will be that of my family watching my TED talk together with me. Thank you.